some of these uh, pressing matters. Right now, we move from that to this is World Telecommunications Week, where stakeholders in the telecommunications ecosystems are congregating in Nairobi for the annual International Telecommunications Week that is set to take place until the 14th of September to deliberate on how best to bridge the digital gap in the continent. Jimmy Mbogo is following up on the deliberations and now joins us with more insight. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Tell us more. Well, thank you very much and a very good afternoon to you too. As you rightfully said, we are currently following up the conversation that is going on at the International Telecom uh, Week uh, right here in Nairobi. And of course, this is one of the biggest areas of conversation across the country, just looking at issues to do with internet and data connectivity. And right now, I'm joined by the CEO of Telcom Kenya, uh, that is uh, Mr. Mugo Kibati, just to understand in terms of the investment gap. And uh, during your opening remarks, one of the things that you talked about is the uh, digital divide gap and the question that then comes to mind is what needs to to happen what does the private sector and particularly players like yourself need to do to bridge this gap well i think the digital divide is something that we've spoken about in a, for a long time and uh, it was brought to significant relief by the covid pandemic experience when we realized that um, we needed to move from the physical brick and mortar world into a virtual world. You know, our professional engagements, our social engagements, all became virtual. And we realized a lot of people were left out because they didn't have access to data, to broadband. Even those who had mobile phones, and there are many, I think uh, in Kenya today we're in a position where we have uh, access to mobile phones, to voice, a lot do not have access to data and broadband, which is what one needs to be able to access the internet. Uh, and so, uh, building, first of all, building out the infrastructure, whether it's fiber or mobile data, you know, 4G, 5G, uh, that's proceeding apace. And uh, you've seen in the, in the current government's uh, better uh, plan, uh, one of their major pillars is digital. Uh, the digital pillar to build 100,000 kilometers of fiber across the country, both by private sector actors like Telcom Kenya as well as by government itself. Uh, we also need to build out our uh, mobile network uh, significantly and upgrade it to 4G, 5G. Um, but then what then also needs to happen is devices need to be accessible affordably to most Kenyans because data is only accessible on a smartphone. And that is why you have the project uh, that is about to be launched soon to manufacture locally devices that are smart and affordable to allow most Kenyans to participate in the digital economy. All right, Mugo, of course, there's a question of investment. And to bridge this divide, there's definitely going to be a huge sum of investment that needs to go into that. What then does Kenya have to do to attract a lot of investors now to come and invest in this space? Look, here we are hosting the International Telecommunications Week. This is a conference that is held annually in the United States of America. It is the first time it is being held on the African con continent and they have chosen Nairobi, Kenya. That in itself is a major boon and boost to attracting investments into this digital space because um, the, the mere fact that Kenya is hosting it, Nairobi is hosting it, allows us to be able to one, showcase what is possible in this country, but also to showcase the opportunities that exist uh, in this country to be able to get investors to help us build out that infrastructure. All right, so Nyakundi currently, I'm also joined by Dan Kwach, who's the CEO of Africa Data Center. And we just want to get his sentiments on their conference, first of all, as well as the investment that they have done and what more needs to happen in that uh, space. Dan, thank you so much for making time to speak to us. So when you look at a conference like this, of course, there's always the question of bridging that di uh, digital divide. And is the private sector doing enough? Is the government doing enough? What are your sentiments on the same? Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, really, this is happening right after the Africa Cloud Summit. I find it quite an interesting time for me to have a conversation with the community and our customers as well in East Africa because one of the things we believe in is uh, the fact that we need to make sure that the digital services that we are talking about today, uh, no one should be left behind in terms of consuming these services. So for us as Africa Data Centers, what we've done really is to just make sure that we are building that very digital infrastructure or these very stable data center environments and we are building them not in every every place in various uh, economic blocks within the African continent and this helps in a way so that we can bridge the gap and make sure that access accessibility to these services is does not leave or disadvantage any part of the continent. When you look at uh, something like last mile connectivity, what are some of the hindrances that we have areas such as Nairobi fully connected yet there are other areas in far flung uh, regions in the country that are barely struggling to keep up with the network? Yes. 
and that is why we need frameworks like in Kenya, we talk of the uni Universal Service Fund, which has actually been rightfully put in place to make sure that we are addressing the fact that we've got served and connected areas, but we also have the underserved and unconnected areas. So what we actually do, what, what those kinds of frameworks actually help in doing is to make sure that the service providers, like ourselves, because we are in this for commercial purposes, but in as much as we are in it for commercial purposes, let it not be that the only place we want to go and build infrastructure is actually for the sole reason that we are going to get some commercial benefits out of it. It should really be that while we gain by serving other customers who pay us, let it also be that we also believe in the purpose of building networks and building infrastructure to serve the less connected because even them need to be part of this journey in terms of our digital transformation. When you look at uh, some of the tax measures that are being put in place, something like the digital tax, there have been a lot of murmurs that people are saying this is going to take us back. What, what are your sentiments even as you wrap up this conversation? Um, the good thing with our regulatory framework in Kenya is that it allows for multi-stakeholder engagement. So I have to say that, uh, you know, things like the digital tax that has come up, and it's, th that, just, that just touches on, on the ICT landscape, but we've got other tax, uh, tax, 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 uh, tax frameworks that the government has raised. But all in all, we are in continuously having conversations with the government so that whatever taxation frameworks they come with, let them not be prohibitive in terms of customers then seeing it as a, as a barrier to entry so that you know the cost then becomes too much than the common mwananchi can actually afford so that they can consume these services so we are having this conversation with the government and we we are positive that you know in the fullness of time they'll get to appreciate that we need to have a, a, a balance so that in as much as they also want the tax but let it not be at all costs and all costs really means then stopping others who can then not be able to afford, in which case then just expanding that digital divide, which, is, which I'm sure is not the government's agenda. All right, Dan, thank you so much. And of course, I think that is a good place to end it. So, Nyakuti, there you have it. And of course, the world population uh, is projected that uh, by a certain time, I think uh, uh, over 40% of the world population will be residing in Africa. And some of this infrastructure will be critical in just making sure that they also get to work in the workplace of the future. But for now, Bakshi you will be here just listening and talking to other stakeholders to make sure that we do not miss anything for our viewers. For now, back to you. All right, Jimmy, they're telling us about the...